This is that real. Did you guys hear how these guys were threatening Dave Chappelle with that satanic directed conversation stuff? I mean, if you guys don't know, Dave Chappelle is very outspoken. Uh, just like seven, ten years, seven to ten years ago, when he had, he was on the director's couch and he he told everyone, you know, how sick Hollywood was, and he gave the, the example of Martin Lawrence and how he's running down the street at three or four in the morning in Hollywood uh, Boulevard, screaming, saying somebody's gonna kill him and all that. He he gave he basically let the world in on what it's like to be someone that has you know pretty much signed the oath to satan that those people in hollywood do the elites do and all the people he he lets you know what it's like for those people and how how those demons and how that how just how those spirits come after them just for being a part of all that they have an obligation now and so he was really going into that and i'm telling you um, just from you know being a target individual and going through the things that I've gone through and and just it, it, it and, and going through directed conversation where people talk about things in your life and you're like how do they know that and what's going on that doesn't make any sense and then seeing what they did to him because he was saying a whole bunch of different things um, for one thing he was saying a whole bunch of st- stuff that you know people that are in that 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 bull in society like on tv and just very popular and have you know that platform to influence people they he was saying things that they can't are not supposed to say because they are so visible and they can influence people the way that you know in numbers so he was saying stuff about how rich people are healthier than normal people because of the money they have that they can make wiser choices and he, you know, he was tell he was about to tell us about those choices, about those health choices that the rich people um, have the, you know, the ability to make, the options that they have. And that's when you see that guy Rosenberg give him that six 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 okay sign. Then you then you see Hebro, the dude with the beard. He tried to give a he give 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 Dave a chance to wiggle out of the stance his stance on the health, on health by turning into a kind of like a joke. He was kind of talking about, you know, that Michael Jackson, like hyperbolic chamber stuff, you know, kind of make you seem like it was silly, you know, make you think about Michael Jackson on that one song. Don't stop, leave me alone, you know, bubbles and all that stuff. And he's in the hyperbolic chamber and just how weird that looked. But those people do have access to those kind of hyperbolic oxid, oxid, oxen, oxen dated or whatever uh, chambers where it just, you know, it, I guess it does a whole bunch of good towards aging, the aging process stops or stalls the aging process. Those rich people have that ability. But the thing also that I really noticed and that you will notice as you listen to this video is when Rosenberg starts talking about, yeah, I know that you're not a really a guy that's a, you know, that's in the nutrition. And then Dave, after that, he start talking about, um, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm just um, about exercising because th- the strength or the, the the healing is in the nutrition. It is in what you eat. It's in what you put in your body. It's not so you can be healed by not taking their medicine. That's their their death pills and take getting all these prescriptions because that's how they keep their industry going. So when this when Heb, when Rosenberg was talking about, oh yeah, but you're not talking. You're not really the kind of guy that's in the nutrition. He said that on purpose because he wanted to leer veer. Uh, um, uh, Dave away from talking about nutrition so Dave kind of like I think he got the cue and he started to talk oh yeah I'm just kind of into you know the exercise and the whatever but see they do little things like that when they get off track when they notice that any of their people that are in their brotherhood get off track they have to redirect them so they'll throw a sign or they'll try to switch the conversation up because they're like oh no 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 that's not what we want you to talk about. it's it's a hive mind situation so you know Dave seemed like he got the warning he backtracked but only a little he didn't come off strong enough, though, in the direction they wanted him to go. But so 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 that's why he tried to kind of like sway him on to something else. That's a Rosenberg was trying to sway him on to something else. And this happens multiple times in this video. Next, Dave goes and he does it again. And he starts talking about the McGregor uh, May- Mayweather fight. And he basically just told the truth. He said the fight was a joke because Floyd's a boxer and McGregor isn't. And that's as simple and as plain and real a statement as you can get. 
And, it, you know, and it made the fight seem kind of, you know, rather foolish, you know, it, it, for anyone to watch. You know, it made it's foolish for them to even, even put that on because, you know, and this is when you this is when you see Hebro throw a, you know, a super obvious devil horn sign in Dave's direction, warning him that he, you know, he said something wrong and that he needs to clean up his mistake clean, quickly. That's what I think that that, that in that moment, that's what that meant, because it was so obvious because right after Dave started talking about how stupid the fight is not. All of a sudden, that devil horn sign comes up. And then Dave, it seems like he caught that cue as well. Because then he backtracked and started talking about he was, you know, he was still going to go watch the fight. And that McGregor's a great fighter and that he has a great opportunity. And that's good that he took it and all this. You know, th- this was this was sort of to make McGregor seem credible and kind of lessen what he said about the fight being stupid. And we know this is big business. We know that all these corporations are linked. I mean, all this whole industry they all are linked for each other it's like they're all in in the bed for each other they're all in the ring for each other so you can't talk about anybody else because you bring down the revenue you bring down uh the the narrative that they're trying to create across the board it's like everything is connected music sports uh um <laughs> wrestling of course everything in politics everything i put wwe in there because that's like the most known like fake we're fake they tell you we're fake we're telling you a fake story we're just trying to get you to believe it that's what everything is trying to come to wwe is an analogy the greatest um metaphor for the world wwe but uh so you know he this was he, he was trying to make mcgregor seem credible but right when you know you thought dave was done you know after he backtracked on the mcgregor thing and said yeah mcgregor good fighter whatever and you know i'm still gonna watch it just when you thought dave was done you know, pissing off the Satanic Brotherhood, he said something else that was like uh, damning to them. And this is when all three of the hosts on the show start taking a part in this Satanic directed conversational harassment towards Dave. Most notably, listen to when the woman starts telling that weird, out of, out of, out of place story about how you know how she knew someone who just couldn't stop digging a hole for themselves. And then and then and then the words uh, about suicide come into it. And since she starts talking about how the guy he was he could no he couldn't get any laughs anymore. Like he was a comedian. It's like he couldn't get any laughs anymore. And then she just and she was just so she he realized that everyone in the in the stadium in they just hated him. They hated him. Or not that not a comedian, it was a boxer. He was like, Yeah, everyone just hated him and no one in that place liked him anymore. And I just felt sorry for him. They were talking about Dave. They were talking about Dave. They weren't talking about no boxer. That was directed towards him. And everything else after that that these people were saying in this video was directed towards Dave. And it seemed as if Dave knew what they were doing. But tried to continue the conversation with them in a jovial type, you know, nonchalant, ignorant type of way, if that makes any sense. You know, many people think Dave came back to comedy because he yearned to be in the spotlight again. But the real reason is because he, when he was a younger comedian, he signed that satanic oath with the Hollywood industry. And that oath is for life unless, he, unless you repent and, and take the consequences of breaking that oath. Despite, you know, he, he, what Dave wanted to do, he wanted to chill with his family in Ohio. And that's why he was gone. He wanted to chill with his family in Ohio. Still, he was still rich. He was still doing shows. Maybe not as big of shows, but he was still big, doing big shows. Had money. He, he just thought he would just live his life and be done with Hollywood. Be done with the oath. But they made him realize, you know, once you're in, you're in. He had already experienced the wealth and the fame Satan offers. The same stuff, uh, you know, Satan offered Christ. He, he you know, f- you know, for him, you know, offered him. All the riches in the world offered him everything he wanted. Of course, Christ did not take those. He did not. He did not bow down to Satan. He said, Satan, get depart from me. Get behind me. For you shall serve the Lord your God. and The Lord your God only shall you serve. But these people, these people in Hollywood and these these politicians and all these renowned people, they were they, you know, the same stuff Satan offered Christ is, you know, was offered to these people for their talents. And for their willingness to bow down to him and to live for him. You know, Dave was Dave was tormented by these demons in that time when he was away. I mean, just imagine the things we as target individuals go through times a billion. You know, I mean, demonic forces that surround these secret society members is probably downright terrifying. You know, they've already sold themselves. So imagine not having the hedge of protection from, you know, from Christ. Now imagine the things, you know, he's seen in the spiritual realm and heard.
effluents don't age the same way as the people. You know what I mean? But I would say, Dave, you don't see, you don't strike me as necessarily a nutritionist kind of guy. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> but I mean, but I live well. You do live very well. Yeah, and 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 I have effectively minimized my stress. And I exercise, and all of these factors I think will contribute to my quality of life. Maybe not the length of my life, but who knows? I can get by a bus. Catch some kind of wild cold or Zika or something. I don't know what's going to happen. To <laughs> so I just don't worry about it. I just I just chill and do shows that I dream about. It's like a fantasy show. I'm like living the dream. Well, you know that um, our good friend uh, Cipher Sounds often yeah. often tells me about you. His favorite thing about being around you is that you live the ultimate life. In that you do exactly what you want to do on the timeline you want to do it. Well, it sure looks that way. It's, it really does. <laughs> you go to all the fights. You love fights, right? So you always go to all the fights. Will you be at McGregor at Mayweather? Okay, that fight I might not actually attend. Because you're worried it could like devolve into like a Bo Galata riot or something? No, because it has all the suspense of a Globetrotter game. <laughs> <laughs> wait, so are you going to watch it at all? Yeah, hell yeah, I'm okay, going to watch it. Yeah. All right, wait, wait, wait. Let's start with Saturday. You guys were both in the building in Brooklyn, yes? yes. Dave, you went. Laura, you went. Yes. Yes. Laura, how did you feel about the fight? Well, I told you guys. See, we had just had the interview with Adrian Broner here, so I felt a little different about him. Like, I, I felt sorry for him. If everybody looks at me like I'm crazy because I felt sorry for him. But why? Because I felt like when we brought up the mental health issues and then, you know, the way he was just reacting. And You I guys brought up mental health issues? Well, we, we kinda, had to. Yeah, we had to. He threatened to commit suicide. He, was, he, had a, he put a gun on the gram. It was bugging out. Oh, I didn't know that. Keep yeah, going. and I just kind of felt he like and you were talking about how so many people depend on him, and I feel like everybody's using him, and I don't know. I just I had this character in my head, okay? You guys went that deep on morning radio? When? With Adrian <laughs> Broner. You know, like, all the time. I thought people were driving their kids to school and all that. What about listen, all that stuff? They listen. gotta learn, man. They gotta so learn. So when I was at the fight, I was feeling different. I didn't know that the whole entire Barclay Center hated him. Everybody, Nobody was rooting for him, and he lost the entire fight. Well, I wouldn't say nobody was rooting for It was for quiet in there, at least on my side. It was quiet because, you know, the fight wasn't that eventful for a casual boxing fan. A real boxing fan is going to at least get caught up in the suspense of can these guys accomplish the things they're trying to accomplish within the parameters of a given round. But a casual boxing fan doesn't understand, like, why aren't they punching each other? At one point... Garcia was like, hit me, hit me, boom, 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 boom. I did not hear him talking in there. Did you hear Mike? I get... read his lips. <laughs> I saw him say, hit me. <laughs> I did not see Mike in there talking. <laughs> hit me, I say. It is <laughs> Rocky dialogue. Wait, so are, are you, so are you, you're not interested, you're not particularly interested or excited by Mayweather McGregor. No, no, I didn't say that. I mean, it's exciting, but it's just like I'm not going to go and, I mean, listen, man, listen. Floyd Mayweather's probably training as we speak. Yes. And as he's training, do you know what Conor McGregor's doing? Learning how to box. <laughs> right, right, right. So he can fight a guy that was born with boxing gloves on. Right. <laughs> Ten ounce gloves. So it's just like, he's, I just don't see how McGregor can do it. And in your situation, when you go to a fight, you sit in the most expensive seats in the house. And are they always comped when you get those seats? You sometimes have to pay, right? Of course. Yes. So you have to weigh if you're going to buy the most expensive <laughs> ticket. Is it worth it to drop seventy grand to go watch this fiasco? Now I will say about the McGregor Mayweather fight that is such a spectacle that that in and of itself is worth seeing. That I feel like no matter what happens, Conor McGregor is a very big winner and talks himself into a lot of a lot of money. It's his first fight, and he gets to fight the very best. And I just feel like that's what the fight's going to look like. 